The barber's trade has a long history. Razors have been found among relics of the bronze around 3500 BC in Egypt. Barbers were highly respected individuals, priests, and men of medicine are the earliest recorded examples of barbers. Men in ancient Greece would have their beards, hair, and fingernails trimmed and styled by the barbers in the marketplace, which also served as the center for debates and gossip. Starting off in the business 36 years ago, um, afros were just leaving out. Curls was coming in. Barbers were seeing a different transition. They were seeing a transition where they were just doing a more or less a razor line because people was going, men and women were getting the curls. So that was one transition. That came out in the eight, early 80s. And then it moved in uh, for about seven to 10 years, people were just getting curled. So the barber sort of saw a, a slow pace for a while. A long time ago, my dad had a tumor. You know what I'm saying? The money had got tight. Me and my brother would need the haircuts. Clipper would land there. Picked him up. You know what I'm saying? And the rest of big history. You know what I'm saying? Barber shop back in the day, they had um, she shines boys in the barber shop. And they had uh, folks to do manicures in the barber shop. And all of that is gone. I don't know what they, um, that have to do with uh, the law or whatever, but that's what they had. They had two time bars in the Bible shop. Matter of fact, I used to be going to the Bible shop in Harmony Church at uh, Fort Minnie. I used to be a two time boy after church, after school. I was shining shoes at Kelly Hill, Sam Hill shining shoes in the Bible shop. And that was, so all that has changed. Cut my first head in 1992. Cut my brother head. I had two brothers. Cross the street with four little boys too, so they daddy told me to do what you want to do. So I think um, from the stories he's told, he started when he was about nine years old cutting on the porch. Uh, I think he was cutting hair about every Sunday morning. Guys come by before you go to church, get their hair cuts and uh once he got old enough and everything, he went to Atlanta, went to school, got the license on, and came on back here, started working here. Um, when I was in the military, I got haircuts on the base. <clears throat> and they weren't up to part of me, so one day I went into the PX and purchased a pair of clippers and began cutting my own hair. And I just fell into it like that. Yeah, I bought my first barber shop. Yeah, it was 1970. Bought down here on Martin Luther King, right over from the YMCA. For centuries, the barber shop environment has been regarded as the authentic epicenter for the community. Images of highly skilled men and women barbers in towns and cities across the world are placing their stake on the profession and taking their influence on others to new heights in the communities they serve. Traditionally, men have enjoyed the ability to network, discover and experience a unique melting pot of the people, places, and things that make up the very fabric of their respective communities. I love being a barber. You're not just someone that cuts their hair. You're their personal stylist, you're their therapist, and you're their friend. That's not a relationship that, that can just be forged with anyone. You used to would come into a barber shop and they would have a stack of magazines and everybody would grab a magazine and be reading a magazine. Nowadays, everybody's on their cell phone, you know. You don't even need a magazine in a barber shop anymore. You don't need a, a picture picture on the, on the wall. They got it on their cell phone and they give it to the barber and say, this is what I want now and stuff in, in that case and stuff. So that's one another change in the barber shop. Hey, this is a rest haven for everything, man. This is a man's social bar. Do, do, do conversations get heated sometimes? Oh, definitely, brother. It, it, it wouldn't be a barbershop if uh, people didn't get heated. Cause everybody passionate about their crap and what they're talking about. Sports, <laughs> sports, fashion, everything, a little bit of everything, bro, you name it. 
you owe your customers yourself. You're not working for them, you're working for yourself. They help make who you are. The community help make who you are and what you're trying to be. Overflow is kind of like a melting pot as far as different type barbers being able to play different roles. We have we have a barber here who's a law enforcement officer. We have a barber who's a, a pastor. Uh, a lot of the barbers have uh, been in rehabilitation programs. And we, we just formed different relationships with the community. We're able to, to do a lot of outreach. Overflow is a barbershop, but it operates more like a church, in a sense, where people can come, they can get a word from God, uh, might even get some assistance to pay a light bill or a water bill. Just a, it's a melting pot just to get healed. We serve in our community. Whatever the community needs, Overflow is willing to do, besides just cutting hair. They look up to us because we try to be positive, fun, and we don't allow no cursing and vulgar language and obscenity. So, and it, you know, we show respect to the kids and to the clients. We make sure that we provide an environment where they do feel comfortable talking, sports, politics, you know, whatever they need to. It's, we have thick skins around here, so things from uh, current happenings uh, to language to jokes, you know, we provide an environment where they feel comfortable being themselves. This place was built for them, not us. So they come in here and they're guys. And it's, it's also nice to be a, a part of that and see a, a side of the male species that most women would not get to be a part of. We looked up on the church and the barber shop as gathering places for uh, to speak about uh, politics or either uh, uh, other things that was going on in the community itself. That's why we gathered. Either we spoke at the church, or either it was at the barber shop. Big part of the community. Big part of the community. You know, you just go to the community, just like just sit around and just hear just just hear a good old story. You know what I'm saying? You just make you feel better. Ain't it like? I, like I said, my uncle had a barbershop when I was a little cousin, been in the barbershop. I've been in the barbershop my whole life. Just, I just like, just sit around, you know, you know what I'm saying? Listen to the old cat tell lies, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing with wrong with a good old lie. You know, you, gonna, you, know the, you know it's a joke when it be through with, you know what I'm saying? So, once you grow up in a shop like that, you know, once you get a taste of it, it's hard to get it out your system. New hairstyles and trends are all about individuality, personality, and personal style. The barber plays an important role in bringing these trends to life. To the barber, this challenges their ability to stay current with what's hot, display their own creativity, and communicate to the world through pop culture. The newest trend, we usually catch that straight through music. Or Instagram. Instagram is probably the most popular way to find something new. Everybody's using Instagram and Facebook and YouTube to sell themselves. The hottest trend as far as hell where I go, man, is really all about it. <laughs> it's funny to me because it's about finding individuality, but within that individuality, so many people get caught up in having the same hairstyle. Right now is the high school starting fire lineup. You know, you want the, the bushy top, and you get this, the size knife meeting taper and line up and you're on your way. It's a little bit of this right here. Right. This is this is what's going on right now. A little, little natural curl, just fade it on the side and send them on their way. Kids don't want to get their hair cut. They just want to wear it nappy with a line. Nappy with a line. Oh no, not at all, man. You have to have a clean fade. Everybody wanted what they call a Philly fade. Uptown fade, you know what I mean? A real fade. Nowadays, God just wants you to put a patch on the side and put a crispy line on the front. There's so many people getting so much stuff like now, they don't even get haircuts no more. They just come in and tempt me up and I want the top nappy. You know what I'm saying? Back when I was growing up, you, you had to get that thing cut, shaped, you know what I'm saying? Want that thing looking like somebody can put a piece of paper on it. Now, you can't even put a nickel on it. You just fall anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, it did the time and change though with a different haircut. So I don't, I don't know if it's a fad or whatnot, but not calling me a hair. 
they, but you know, we cut they had to make it nappy. After you get through cutting it, I get a sponge and make it right back nappy. When back in the day, they had about one style. You, you, they cut it like they want to, and you comb it like you want to comb. Because of uh, our clientele, they, the way we're built, uh, set up and everything is basically that's that's just how it is. Everybody straight down the pipe. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> the young guys are getting the temp fade. Uh, they're wearing, you know, dreads and they wear them in different styles. And it's just a, a change of the trends, the change of trends that we have nowadays. In today's uh, barbershop, I do feel that uh, most of your barbershop tonight, they say they have master barbers. And uh, I agree with that because uh, they cut all kinds of the trends right now are razor fades, hard parts. We enjoy that because it's, it's a style that can really only be fully taken care of by someone with the precision of a master barber. So they can't just go anywhere and get what's going on right now. They need to come to us. Uh, what my man got right here. A little funky, little temp fade, you know, high, low, however you like it, bar temp fade, shadow temp fade, there's many variations to it. Um, as far as my straight hair people go, my Caucasian and other people of that nature with those hairstyles, they have become accustomed to, it's like a comb over, so to say, with a heavy part in, on one side of it. Um, what else? The bald head, whether you like it or not, I know young people who go and transitioning over. I don't know what's up with that, but hey, shout out to the bald head aficionados, you know. What many respect most about the barbershop owner is the self-made nature of the profession. This grassroots, word-of-mouth profession will quickly remind a barber they are only as good as your last client's visit. A master barber is a... Uh, is, uh, you know they can do much more than just a barber most people think a barber can you know just clippers and straight razor shaves master barbers can actually do chemical services um, they can fit hair pieces they can do uh, facial services scalp treatments so it's um, the curriculum is the, while the curriculum is different um, the actual amount of hours is the same as uh, you know master cosmetologist barbershop run itself number one you know what I'm saying so I'm, I'm honestly just the person that go pay the bills you know you I just collect and go pay bills but well, barbershop run itself, man, um, you really don't need nobody in here, no owner, or anything like that. But being the owner, man, um, is, is more like being a leader of, of, of a crew. Um, <clears throat> you got to be energetic. You got to be um, supportive of, of everybody else. And you also got to be knowledgeable. Being a barbershop owner has taught me a lot about the human factor. You can have a good plan, you can have a good vision, you can have great ideas. But ultimately, the people that you choose to, to help you achieve those goals are going to determine the ultimate success in the when I came into the business, it was uh, white and black business when I came into the business. Uh, now it's more Asian and Indian business now. And uh, we as a black race, we just stepped to the side and didn't do anything to help our own and everything. And so a lot of the black businesses had to go out of it, went out of business in the 90s when uh, the other people came in and began to take over the business. It forces the small peoples out of business. But thank God for me, I know so many people and you know, from delivering supplies for 29 years, uh, I became like a family to everybody. Being a female owner and a female barber, it actually just makes me more determined to, to prove to people that I can do something that not a lot of women can. And especially in this realm of specialty with bringing back the lost art of traditional barbering. That's been uh, a challenge at times, but it's been so rewarding at times. I, I don't let the fact that I am a female in a male-driven profession intimidate me at all. I'm the one with the straight razor. Um, a successful shop owner, to me, you kind of have to take yourself out of it. Um, and basically see, you, you kind of take on two roles. Um, not only are you in it to uh, make sure that your clients are taken care of, but you have to make sure, uh, I see myself as basically I work for my staff. 
you know um, I have to make sure they're happy um, the team has to be complete we need you know everybody on the same page everybody on the same you know level and uh, everybody wanting to accomplish the same goal I can't do it by myself and keep the doors open I have to have them all on board so uh, you know my job is to make sure that they have everything they need whether it's education products um, and just uh, you know the right the right tools um, everything's in work and order in a presentable shop the world of grooming is all about confidence it takes the timeless techniques of Barbara's past to properly work the tools in grooming the single blade straight razor the shaving cream and the hot towel all play an important part in the grooming process okay groom 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 is grooming is more detailed um you know, if I'm just gonna catch your hair, I'm just gonna cut it and just put some spray on you and send you out the door. Grooming is more like applying chemicals to the hair, a um, little bit more oil sheen. Um, you know, just paying attention to detail. The little small hair that's around the edge of, you know, the hair on the back of your neck. Your barber ain't cutting that off, off the back of your neck, then he dead wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's not grooming, he's just that barber. So, you know, it's all about the, the cleanliness of, of a haircut. Cutting someone's hair is just, you know, I'll, as an example, someone comes in and they say, hey, I want a, I want a two on the sides and, uh, you know, just blend in the top. Well, you know, uh, grooming someone's hair is actually giving their, their uh, looking at their actual head shape um, and cutting and giving them a haircut that fits their head shape. Um, taking care of other things than just a haircut, you know, their ears, their eyebrows, um, teaching them about products, teaching them, um, you know, finding out what their their morning routine is and then fitting in a, uh, a styling procedure that, that goes along with that. Uh, anybody could cut hair, you know, cutting hair is just what it sounds like, cutting hair, but when you grooming your client, you you really worried about their whole total look, their total appearance, you trying to hit every hair on their face and make sure it's not out of place. To me, cutting hair, it's one thing and grooming is another. See, we have a lot of professional people come in. So a haircut just won't get it. So when grooming them, they look professional. They look like somebody and, and most of all, they feel like they're somebody. When you groom somebody, you know, you, you take, well, you know, you, you give them the hot towel, you know what I'm saying, you give them the, the oil sheen, you know, you, you, take care of them. but you know you offer that service to everybody else but you know like most times they don't they don't come back though so you know they don't really get to fulfill the full effect of it you know what i'm saying so because you might get a joke you might have a you know come in give them a hot towel rub your hair real good throw that oil on them and that that oil sheen that smell good they be like wow you know what i'm saying they change their life you know what i'm saying walk out that door he's a whole different person anyone can cut hair you can give a, a three-year-old a pair of scissors and they can successfully cut hair. Grooming the client is so much deeper than that. It's, it's finding a style and a cut that fits their personality and that also fits their lifestyle, something that they're going to be able to do at home. And it's going to entail hair, beard, the whole image of who they want to be. And so you're part of their best face forward. It's, it's a good feeling to be a part of that and make someone just feel so much better about themselves. Well, you can cut a person's hair in five or ten minutes. When you groom someone, you give them a little more of your time and passion and you cut. More of a quality cut when you groom them. I'm going to say about anybody can cut hair. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but uh, you want to get into the more professional end of it and making a client feel good about themselves, you, know, you start getting into the grooming. What can one say about the future of a profession and that has uniquely had its place in modern civilization for thousands of years? Where can those blessed with the ability to affect the confidence on men and women take their profession over the next five to 10 years? Well, word on the street is, barbering is in good hands with today's generation of groomers and business owners. The prestige of being a master barber, coupled with being a self-made entrepreneur, is attracting a new crop of men and women to barbering at an alarming rate. Well, it's gonna still be here. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Um, matter of fact, we'll be coming back strong because they're gonna have to cut them naps off in a minute. That's why I see it. 
We're gonna be around like toilet paper. But I think I think more barbers, man. We're gonna have more barbers because people loving the profession, and um, it's not easy money. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not easy making a person um, improving the image. It's not easy. So I just want to let you know, in five to ten years, you feel like you want to be a barber. This ain't easy, baby. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta have passion for this. You ain't got passion for this, man. Stay your, get out of the way. There's other people got passion for this. I love this. Five to ten years, I think. Uh, I think barbering is going to be, uh, you know, going to have its its comeback. I think it'll it'll finally, you know, have arrived. Um, here in Columbus, you know, we're a little slower to get things than some of the some of the bigger cities. So the bigger cities are already kind of ahead of us. So, but uh, I see it. Um, you know, just kind of taking its spot back to where it's a normal and not just a fad, and uh, it's back to where it's a normal thing. When I got into barbering, it was way more bad than I ever, ever thought it'd be. So as far as saying where it'd be in the next five years, I don't know, because it's an ever-growing business. Like, it's just no way that you can get in here and really put your mind to it and not flourish, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it can go in any avenue. I really can't say it for that. I know it's gonna grow though. There's no decrease in this at all. In the next 10 years, I, I see the bottle shop on top. I see the bottle shop is on, gonna be on top. They are, they, are, they are steady progressing. You have barbers come in now, they're more into what they do. They, they, they give 100% of what they do. They're studying YouTube, they're studying Facebook. They, they, they're looking at every avenue to better themselves. Uh, this young generation, they don't mind paying $150, $200 for a clipper. You know, anything to make their back bar look good, anything to accomplish a good haircut. That's what the barbershop is doing now.